Well, hey there, hope this video finds you doing well. I'm gonna be shooting a series of videos covering a variety of different personal finance topics and uh, wanted to start with some questions pertaining to future value. Uh, and so this is a, uh, for those of you that know, whether it's corporate finance or personal finance, um, kind of the time value of money is a imperative uh, basic pillar and foundation of those two topics. And so we're going to be working through uh, some of the more basic elements that are important to grasping some of the more complicated elements, particularly pertaining to capital budgeting. Uh, so um, we're going to start and just kind of work through a question. Uh, and I'm going to utilize what we call the future value formula as a way to derive a, an answer. Um, so the question, I'm just going to read it, but obviously it's here in front of you. And that's Megan Barry, a freshman at University of Minnesota, has some financial questions for the next three years and beyond. And so there's going to be a series of questions pertaining to kind of this scenario. Uh, first question is, if Megan's tuition, fees, and expenditures for books this year total $22,000, what will they be during her senior year, which will be three years from now, assuming costs rise 4%? annually. And so this is a what we call a future value question. And, and so the reason for that is we're trying to figure out what something is worth or costs in the future. We've got some financial figures with regards to present day, but we don't know what we're going to be in the future. I'm sure you can realize this has some implications for investing and savings and retirement and those sorts of things. So whenever I approach this type of question, it always helps to be really organized. And so the first thing I like to do is draw a little bit of a timeline. And so that timeline is going to represent uh, visually what we're actually trying to do. And so notice we're here. This is kind of what we call present day or PV, present value. And in present day, we've got $22,000 in costs. And we need to know in one, two, and three years, what are they going to be? And so we're taking this $22,000 and we're trying to figure out what it's going to be worth in year three. Now, the other part of this question is, of course, the 4% costs annually. And so every single year, our costs are going to go up by 4%. Now, this is a pretty simple question that you could probably utilize with, or, or do without any kind of formula, but I'm going to show it to you anyway, because I think it's helpful for understanding it on a basic level. And then you can apply it to maybe a more challenging uh, type scenario, like ones you'll be uh, obviously presented with as you continue through school. Uh, so let's work out what the formula would be for this question. Now that you know kind of visually what we're trying to do, we're trying to figure out what this $22,000 is going to be worth at, in year three or cost us in this case in year three. Um, so we need to know the future value formula. And so the future value is the result of taking the present value, which we know, and multiplying it by the result of one plus little i to the nth power. Uh, now, for those of you at home, uh, a little i represents interest rates and represents number of periods, which could be months, could be days, could be years. In this case, we know that the number of periods is expressed in years. Uh, so what I try and do is, in order to stay organized, is write out what we know, right? And so the future value, which is what we want, we're not really sure what that is. That's what we're trying to find out. The present value, we know, is the $22,000. So that's pretty clear. The I, the interest rate, is actually 4%. And of course, N, the number of periods, is 3. Very simple. So we start by filling in all the information that we have. right? And so we've got $22,000 multiplied by the result of 1 plus I. Now here's where people can get confused, is in order for this equation to work, you have to convert an interest rate from a percentage to a decimal. And so by moving the decimal point over, we're going to have 0 0.04. And then, of course, we're going, to multi or we're going to take that to the third power since that is um, the number of years. So you can do this a few different ways. Um, obviously, if you have a financial calculator uh, like a, a BA2+, uh, which is a te Texas Instrument one, which is one I primarily use, this can be very, very simple. Um, you can also do it by hand. Um, and then so um, we're going to do that. So you're going to take 1.04 to the third power. And what you should get, I'm going to go ahead and change colors here. What you should get is 1.1249. 1 okay. And so that's the result of taking one 
plus 0.04, so 1.04, to the third power. And so now, the only thing we have to do is multiply that by our $22,000. And so if you go ahead and punch that into your calculator, you're going to get $24,747. Now, for those of you at home, you'll notice that it technically is $24,747 uh, and then a fraction of a penny. It's actually 0 .008. Uh, so if you really, really wanted to, you could round and say it's going to cost you $24,000. $747 and one cent. Uh, however, at that point, we're kind of splitting hairs. Uh, ultimately, the goal of this exercise is kind of to get a ballpark of what it potentially will cost from a planning standpoint, because Megan here is trying to figure out what am I going to be paying in four years or in three years during my senior year, assuming my costs go up 4%, which is pretty reasonable. So notice with this question, the only things that are important, obviously, are identifying the known variables. Uh, so in our case, right, what we did on this side here, uh, and then, of course, plugging in those variables and working the equation.